Thank you for joining us. You are live on KogoCast, the real estate investors podcast. I'm your host, JT DeSocio. We're back with another episode here to give you some good nuggets of information if you guys are interested in entering the world of real estate investments. I'm going to first uh, go ahead and fly the flag and do our shameless plug for all those interested in, uh, particularly for this episode. Uh, if you need more details after the podcast is over and you want to know more, you can go to our website at Secured Investment Corp, securedinvestmentcorp.com. Uh, we also have Kogo Capital. That's our funding arm, kogocapital.com. And the Lee Arnold System of Real Estate, that's at leearnoldsystem.com. And where does this all begin, JT? Because I don't know where to begin and I need to get somewhere. Go to a funding tour. We are nationwide. We host uh, funding tour seminars nationwide. You can go to fundingtour.com. Get in on it. It's the best tuition paid three-day training that you will have. I have the pleasure of, of bringing in a star today. We have Heather Dreves. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Heather. Heather is our director of funding for Secured Investment Corp. Heather is also the host of the recent uh, newly formed Impact Investments podcast. So hopefully you guys can check it out there. You can go to securedinvestmentcorp.com, click on the media tab, scroll down to uh, where it says podcasts, and you'll see it, Impact Investments. That's another podcast that we had, except this podcast is focused towards something a little bit different. It's more about buying the notes and, and the actual real estate investments themselves. Uh, Heather, welcome. Thank it's you. good to have you on. I feel very privileged to be here. I know. We're, see, I'm, I'm going to try. Heather wanted to, you know, maybe have a glass of wine or a beer or something <laughs> like that. To kind of li- And you know what? I went for it. I did. We should have just done it anyway. But, you know, our CEO probably would have had some words about that. But, well, you know, we Next digress. Time. All right. So, hey, <laughs> uh, background. So, Tell me about you, yeah. where you come from, why real estate investment? How did you, you know, absolutely get into the space? Um, I actually kind of fell into it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, got into private money about 17 years ago. Uh, I've got two children who are now 18 and 22. And when my youngest got into kindergarten, I happened to know somebody that worked for a private money lender and happened to reach out to him. And uh, he asked me to come in, interview, and I kind of just fell into it, um, but found that I really had a passion for it. Uh, I worked in a uh, for a company that actually provided financing for lenders and also, at that time, owner-occupied uh, private money loans. Um, did everything from escrow, learned how to be a licensed closer, um, and then eventually progressed into getting my securities license and selling fractional interest in notes. Um, found that there is a huge uh, need and want for people to deploy capital through what they call notes or trust deeds. Uh, and at that time, we were selling fractional interest interest in notes. So I had to have a securities license, went forward with that, helped a little bit with servicing. And then uh, seven years ago, uh, was recruited by the Lee Arnold, who is a very good salesman, mm-hmm. uh, and convinced me that this was where I needed to be. And I've never looked back. Uh, you know, I really enjoy working with the investors and uh, uh, also have taken up uh, the opportunity to be active in real estate and I'm a real estate investor myself. So kind of a little bit of background about how I got into the industry, um, but really enjoy working with the investors, helping them create wealth for themselves uh, and for their families through investments, through our trust deeds, and also through our funds. Now, uh, when we talk about notes, trust deeds, deploying capital, Mm -hmm. okay, now the the seasoned investors there are are automatically going to know what she's talking about. But let's say there's somebody like me, okay, and I'm interested in getting into real estate investment. I have no clue. I, I think real estate investment, I think Chip and Joe, fixer upper, yep. you know, we're going to go in, we're going to demo this wall, we're going to put up nice new backsplash, we're going to sell it, we're going to make a fortune, and we'll be on HDTV too. A lot of work too. Right, right, <laughs> right. But your side of it is just more of just the kind of, I'm not going to say silent partner, but kind of a just investor in a fund. So explain notes. Sure to me and explained uh, deploying capital and yeah. so on. So, I mean, there is a, a lot of education out there now uh, about alternative investments. Not everybody is putting their money with an investment advisor or a stockbroker and trusting that things are going to go well. I mean, if you were in the stock market in 2008, um, right. there was some collateral damage. And I think since then, a lot of people have taken more responsibility with their portfolio and their assets. And this is 
considered an alternative investment. Um, If you're looking at investing in what we call notes, it can also be called trust deeds, but essentially you're buying that lien. So Kogo Capital originates notes for our real estate investors, people that have gone through our funding tours and our education that are buying investment properties. We originate those notes. And then we actually sell those notes to end lenders. So these are people that have capital. Some of them are liquid funds. Some are through their IRAs and their 401ks if they're with a self-directed custodian. Uh, But essentially, they are buying that lien. So the security for them is they're the lien holder. They're essentially the bank. Mm -hmm. You would be the bank if you buy the note. And you have the right to foreclose on that asset in the event that the borrower doesn't make their payments. So it's not like a volatile stock market that you're in it for the long haul if it goes down. You can, you can pivot and you can strategize, you know, if the market goes down and, and you have to take a property back through foreclosure, which is a, from a note that you purchased, right. um, you can hold it as a rental. You know, you can make strategic decisions to ride out the downturn. Uh, and there's a lot of real estate investors that maybe were fixing and flipping, owned rentals, don't want to be landlords any longer, um, but they like the security of that real estate asset, and a lot of them turn to purchasing notes. So um, what what you're saying is is basically with real estate purchasing notes, I mean, there are, if a rainy day comes, they have a couple of umbrellas at their yep. disposal as opposed to like buying a stock and the stock falls out and it's one stock that they have invested in, they can't Absolutely. really... Uh, pivot or strategize to like hold on to their money mm-hmm. elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the thing that I think sets us aside with the notes that we sell is um, something that isn't spoke about a lot, but we provide servicing. So we have an amazing servicing department company, Lake City Servicing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that everybody's aware of that. And not only do we sell the notes uh, and they are assigned the first lien in their name, but we're going to service it all for them. So we do all the collection efforts. We collect those from the borrowers. We will see them through to the end. If it becomes a problem account or what we would call a defaulted note and the borrower's not paying, we handle that for them too. So we're not that private lender that's selling notes saying, good luck. You know, go find a servicing agent and hope things work out. We're in it for the long haul. Now, and for those of you who are, who are watching, Lake City Servicing is our servicing arm of Secured Investment Corp. You can actually check them out, too. That's lakecityservicing.com uh, or go to securedinvestmentcorp.com. Check out the real estate investment opportunities there, and that will also connect you to Lake City Servicing. And, hey, if you need funding, all right, go go capital and get your funding. Um, do we have somebody knocking? Uh, you know what? Uh, for those of you just listening in audio land, somebody's banging on the door here. And what? Hey, come on in, Eric. What do we got? That's interesting timing. Who do we got? Hey. We got Eric Bergman here as well. Come on in. You got okay. The in uh, you know what? So here's how this just works. Here, uh, Heather is obviously our guest today, but we got Eric Bergman who does investor relations for Secured Investment. Come on in the middle, man. You're not stealing her from me. No, are you? no, no. I'm not stealing. We'll just we'll just kind of get you. It's too bad we don't have another stool or something like that. That's but all um, right. I just came in to say hi. He's tall and he's going to make me look even shorter. <laughs> This is just how this works out, you know. I mean, I had Gary dumping stress cogo balls on me on the last episode, and now, you know, Gigantor <laughs> next to us. Uh, Eric, welcome. You know what? Thanks I'm glad you me. popped in. I, we were just talking about notes, um, and, you know, I'm going to f- kind of angle our mics in a little bit so we can get you in here as well. Um, and we were talking – Heather was explaining to us that, you know, notes in real estate is a little bit safer than stocks in terms of – if, if the bottom kind of falls out, you, you've got extra parachutes. you got an extra umbrella for the rainy day. Right. Um, so for those out there, like let's say I'm approaching retirement or mm-hmm. I'm hitting retirement or something like that. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to like maybe collect a little mm-hmm. bit more, you know, why – aside from the fact that, hey, you've got an extra umbrella for a rainy day, why would investing in real estate notes or, or, or the fund – uh, benefit them? What kind of returns are, are they seeing on that? You know, it's not always about the returns, it's about the risk. So, you know, a stock, uh, you know, w- whether a stock's trading at 50, 100, or 150 doesn't matter, it can always go all the way to zero, okay. right? It's an asset yeah. based off of uh, a bid and an ask, a piece of paper, okay. right, essentially. So, uh, anytime that you can invest in an asset that actually has physical, tangible value, uh, your your risk is limited to whatever that asset is worth at that time. Uh, now, granted, there's some things that come into play in terms of liquidity and, and how important that is to you and where you're at in life. But if we're just keeping it real basic, a stock can go to zero. Uh, a hard asset such as real estate uh, can't 
go to zero. Okay. All right. So either way, it's like they can lose or there can be a bad deal or the person's not paying. Do you find that a lot of these notes are, in fact, like foreclosures? No, very few. Okay. Um, I would say our actual foreclosure rate uh, is less than 1%. Oh, okay. Um, I think the beautiful thing about what we do is we are a very organic environment, right? So we have our education, our funding tours. We have students that have be- gone through all those programs and become educated. It is not uncommon when we have a problem account that we have the ability to look in our data system and say, hey, we know a guy in Ohio. Can you go out and take a look at this property? This okay. note's not paying. Sometimes we've been able to sell them. And that's you know, somebody not paying their mortgage? Or yeah, is that so the, these are these okay. notes are real estate investors that are either purchasing or refinancing investment properties. Um, you always run the risk of default. That's what the risk in this is. There's no guarantee that everybody's going to make their payments. But what I can guarantee you that we normally have such a broad reach across students, real estate investors all over the United States, that we have the ability to sometimes cure these defaults, sell these notes as a defaulted note to right. someone in that local market. You know, some of these borrowers have just gotten in a bind, gotten in over their head, and they're willing to just let the property go. It's not uncommon for us to call one of our students up in that area and say, hey, we've got a deal for you um, at, you know, 60 cents on the dollar. Right. Um, Our investors aren't in these to own these real estate assets. They want to get paid their payments and they want to be paid off. They're in this. So they want to get it, maybe fix it or or wholesale it or turn it over, you know, but they want they want to get paid out and get out of it or hold on to it and get somebody who will pay the mortgage, right. or pay the rent. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? Before I move forward here, you know, Peter's holding up signs at me. He does this. <laughs> it screws me up. But uh, I, I do have to mention now that we have Eric in here and you smell nice, man. Thank, it's, you. It's, it's, Thank you. It must be his cologne or something like that. But, you know, that's all right. I'm, I'm man enough to admit that. Anyway, uh, they have a podcast as well that you guys should definitely check out if you're in on this side of the investing arm of it. Uh, it's called Impact Investments Podcast, uh, and they basically talk about these notes, uh, some of these deeds, and then also discuss on why real estate investing, uh, how it can actually do a little more than make you a profit. It can actually better communities and a and little bit of philanthropic uh uh, endeavors that people dive into. You should check them out. Impact Investments Podcast. You can go to securedinvestmentcorp.com, click the media tab, or securedinvestmentcorp.com. This is a long one, guys. You got a pen? Impact dash investments dash podcast. Uh, but you can click the media tab. You can also get it on YouTube. Any of our Facebook pages, Secured Investment Corp, Lee Arnold System of Real Estate Investing at Kogo Capital, or download the audio, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Echo, Alexa, can you play me a podcast? We're on all those things. Yeah, it, you, <laughs> I'm a very hey. Listen, I'm a very busy man. I all bet right, you are. It, 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 it takes it takes the crazy, you know, kind of like bundling it up to get it out there because everybody's got a different way of absorbing the information. Yep. Some people will watch the video like they're doing now and seeing me half sitting on my deal because he's so tall, uh, and then other people will just take. I it. listen to him every morning on my do way you? to work. Yep. You da- do you download? Podcast. Do you download the audio? Uh, yep. Okay, so yes. you're, you know, and our director of ops also kind of, uh, oh, can uh, move, move to the side? Oh, he, he's all right. Up. If I get out of here, yeah, you can, you <laughs> can actually head out. Thanks for coming, Eric. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. you know what? Just go ahead and drop in and like, you know, interrupt my stuff anytime you feel <laughs> like it, Eric. Have a good show. All Thank right. Anyway, that was Eric Bergman. Uh, he also co-hosts with Heather Dreves on the Impact Investments podcast. All right, we're back to you. Uh, okay, private money returns. So one thing I do want to notate, um, just on a side note, is not only do we have notes to actually purchase as far as opportunities to deploy capital if you're looking to invest, but we also have our real estate funds. Uh, For some of our, and I call them investors, so these are people with money that they want to deploy, um, sometimes the notes are scary for them. I mean, the risk is you might have to foreclose, and that means that you're going to have to pay for foreclosure costs. Okay. They could be $2,000. Okay, they yeah. could be $10,000. Wow. You could get that property back. It could be trashed inside. There could be a tenant living in it that you have to evict. Could have ripped so out all the copper. It's not and... for the weak of heart. Um, there is a really good upside to it. You know, these are loans that we're not lending more than 70% loan to value. So there's a large amount of equity in these, but not everybody wants to deal with that. Um, the good news is we have real estate funds. So I said again, Kogo originates these notes. These notes are originated through our funds. Then we sell those notes out of the funds. The benefit to the fund Mm -hmm. is we keep an interest spread. So we'll write that note at 13% and we will turn around and sell that to an end lender at nine. The fund receives that residual 
3% spread or whatever it is, uh, and then they sell off the risk. Then the note buyer basically or essentially has the risk of that. Um, it's the same asset, essentially. It's the notes, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a much more passive environment to be in. Um, we currently have one fund open for contributions and are working on a third right now. It's in the process with the SEC. Um, but if the notes is something that doesn't interest you, but you like the assets, but you don't want to deal with the risk of foreclosure, the fund is a great environment to go into, too. Now, if, if anybody out there is thinking... Um you know, yeah, I'd be interested in this. I mm -hmm. don't, I don't want to have to deal with the possibility of a foreclosure or kicking somebody out or moving that note along. Yep. Um, if they're interested in the fund, just to sit there and, I mean, obviously you contribute capital. Yep. To invest in the fund and you get a return. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you say we have three, we have two, but a third is coming. Um, but. Our first fund, basically, what, what are the requirements? Like, what's the ante, so to Absolutely. speak, into, into getting um, into that? Great question. Our first fund is closed, so that is not open for any new contributions. Okay. Our second fund is still open. Uh, the minimum investment is $50,000. And you do have to be accredited. So they have to be able to qualify as an accredited investor. So there are asset standards. They have to have a million dollars or more in assets. Okay. Or they can qualify by annual income as a married couple or an individual. And we can talk offline about that. Um, and uh, the funds pay out quarterly. They get qu very nice quarterly reports. Our accounting team does an amazing job. They're fully audited funds. Um, but right now, you do have to be accredited to go into the fund. Hopefully, that will change in the future, but uh, we're and still working on that. How do, you, how do you reach accreditation? I mean, how do you, you know, so you assets, say a million dollars. Yeah, which, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'm not accredited. They, you would be surprised. It can be rental properties. A lot of people have a huge portfolio of rentals. Okay. Uh, it can be stock you know, accounts. It can be your IRA. Can it be your own? Can it, it cannot be, your... be your primary residence. Okay. So any equity you have in your primary residence cannot be included. You in hear that, that folks dollars. can't use your own house. So mm -hmm. you got to, you know, get the jet skis and the boat and all the other stuff out there <laughs> and get those in. Okay. So anything sure. except for your primary residence, any other stipulations there that, uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But you, they do have to be able to prove that, and it has to be proven through a letter by an attorney, an accountant, or a financial advisor. So there's a little bit of a process, but it's pretty painless. Um, we can walk you through that, though. Um, and the funds have great returns. You okay. know, uh, our fund has historically paid out double-digit returns every year. It does very, very well. Uh, the other asset we put through there is not only the notes, but the Lee Arnold System of Real Estate, our practice, what we preach uh, division of our company that actually goes out in the Spokane community and buys distressed properties. Right. We actually buy those with fund, uh, pro not proceeds, but money out of the fund. So we can take 25% oh, okay. of our fund balance and participate in those. So some of those things are turning over because Lee's out there, you know, oh, yeah. breaking ground, sweating it out and, and getting these properties flipped and moved on, bettering yep. the communities. Absolutely. You know, I um, mean, he's raising the property value of, of certain neighborhoods and, and Yep. Basically, people out there can get in on this too. Yeah, correct? we've created so much first-time home buyer opportunities in the Spokane market, uh, in you know areas wow. that you know most people would turn their head at. Uh, my son is actually cleaning one of them out right now, and my my parents, quite honestly, were mortified that I would encourage him to do this, like it was a biohazard or something. <laughs> and you know, my kids aren't afraid to get dirty. Right. And this house, when it's done, is going to be great. Okay. Um, and the neighbor to the right is a great neighbor. The house is cleaned up. The neighbor to the left has a little bit to be desired. But you know, most people wouldn't have even looked at this. There was garbage to the garage wow. ceilings. The house. Somebody was, was filled. hoarding. It was a guy that owned it since 1978. Oh, wow. He okay. had owned it for years right. and didn't leave it to his kids when he passed away and had a small mortgage on it, so it actually went back to the lender. Um, but I guess my point is, you know, most people would drive by that and not even bat an eye at it. Um, our P APH, Arnold Professional Holdings Team, will go in there, clean that up, do, you know, uh, minor rehab to it. We call it cosmetic, you know, clean it up, mm -hmm. make it look uh, presentable because the bones are great. And some nice family is going to move into that house because it's reasonably priced. It's probably going to be under a $200,000 mark, which in the Spokane market, which is one of the hottest markets right now. Yep, Spokane, Washington, Yep, folks, for some of you who don't know. So that's kind of the cool thing about the fund, too, is you get to participate in those. Okay, uh, now... Um, uh, gotcha. All right, Peter's keeping us to yeah, time. Yeah, he's giving us the, that's what he the does. countdown. Um, okay, so just so we can keep things on track here because uh, believe me i could start talking about the the, the <laughs> how because people think about this stuff and they and they're thinking either a they they're willing to do the work to reap the reward 
you know, such as fixing and flipping a house. Or um, I didn't know that the fact that you can just kind of invest a little money in it and then, you know, the process kind of goes on without you. But Mm -hmm. obviously you provided the backing, the financial backing. So you're still part of it. Um, All right. Pitfalls and risks. Of investing um, private money. Now, I had Gary Myers, uh, the last guy that came on. Um, he's our uh, vice president of broker development. Um, he explained kind of, and I love get asking this of everybody, private money, hard money. What's the difference? It's the same thing. Got it. I always call it private money. I think hard money has a, a bad rap. Uh, I think, you know, the thing with private money or what people would call hard money is it provides a huge opportunity not only to the investors to get good yields on their money, right. but we're helping families create wealth for themselves. I mean, most of our clients, our borrowers, our students, are people that have already had a career. Mm-hmm. They're retired. Um, I know this. You're not going to get rich doing one thing. You know, you have to be doing multiple things, whether that's working a full-time job, doing some things on the side. My husband and I have fixed and flipped houses. I've grouted tile and, you know, we're paying for our kids' college out of our pocket, but we wouldn't be able to do that, you know. So, yes, they are higher rates, right? Our borrowers pay a little bit more for their money, but it's a cost of doing business. They know we can move quick. They know that they can get the funding from us. They can get in, fix fix and flip a house in maybe 90 days. And, you know, create a nice little uh, stream of income for their family outside of their normal resources. So Does, does credit matter as much as um, the banks? No, okay. no. We look at credit. Um, uh, I can say that our credit scores that we look at are typically dictating what their pricing is. Okay. Um, but what we're going to look at, too, is, and I, I say this all the time, we want to make sure we're putting our borrowers in a position that they can be successful. So giving somebody a big loan that has never paid a bill on time, uh, that has no other income coming in that can't service the debt, which our lenders are expecting them to make payments, is not doing that person a service. That's the person that needs to go back to education, maybe find a partner to partner with on their first deal, be Mm -hmm. successful, and then come back to us. Um, So we look at credit not only to make sure that they're credit worthy, but to make sure that we're setting them up for success. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, so before we get into pitfalls and the risks, mm-hmm. uh, just to let you know, now a, a lot of this sounds like a lot of information, um, and then some of you are kind of like, wow, I didn't know you can make money that way. Get in on a funding tour, guys. It's where it starts, yep. fundingtour.com. Uh, we are nationwide. We have our business development consultants and some of our speakers and trainers that go out, and they give you a three-day tuition paid tutorial to get into or at least learn all the ways that you can possibly make money in a career in real estate investing or passively even after you've retired making money in real estate investing so get over to their fundingtour.com we have Um, a lot of members from our fund that started at our events really yep okay so i mean and that that gives you an idea and we we tell you about all that as well so if if you've got uh, you're ready to get some skin in the game get over to a funding tour fundingtour.com all right the pitfalls and the risks I mean, I've mentioned a lot of them. The yeah. risk in the notes is you need to be prepared to own that property. Okay. I tell all of our lenders that, and I probably scare away more uh, than I attract, um, but I want them to know what they're getting into. The risk is there's no guarantee that the borrower is going to make their payment. We do our due diligence. We do as much as we can to make sure that we're setting them up for success and that they can service the debt and exit the loan, but it's not a guarantee. Um, what I can guarantee you is you're going to have a real estate asset to back your money. Um, and I can guarantee you that there's going to be equity in it. Um, but the risk is you have to be prepared to step up and foreclose if you have to. You got you to you gotta walk through the weeds to get paid out. And you got to do it out. quick. Yeah. You know, we don't mess around. Um, if people are not calling us from a servicing perspective uh, and letting us know that they're having issues, you know, we encourage our lenders to let us initiate foreclosure. It typically does two things. It gets someone's attention real quick. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, it, uh, it starts the foreclosure process. Can a foreclosure be stopped? Yes. So they can actually redeem the property for what's owed. Um, as attorney's costs add up, they would actually have to pay those in addition to what they owe in principal and interest and any other fees to redeem the property. But it can be stopped. And, and I've heard in some cases in particular states that um, if somebody's foreclosed on, that process can take a long time. So that's another pitfall, right? Yep, absolutely. We love Texas. You can foreclose in about 90 days in Texas. They don't mess around. Texas don't mess around. Yep, you can wear your boots. (laughs) 
You can hang a I sign above your door that says, we ain't dialing 911. <laughs> you know, I saw that once in Austin. Um, okay. But, but then other places like, say, California. Sorry, oh, guys. Florida. Year, Florida. At least a year. Illinois wow. is a very long. So you have non-judicial and judicial foreclosure states, and the process is different. Okay. So we can get you more information about that from servicing if you'd like to look at that in more detail. But, but it's a good way to get a paycheck in the mail each month. And, and Absolutely. I have so many lenders. They travel. I don't, don't call me. Just send my checks and we direct deposit them and they're traveling all I have this one couple that they both have IRA accounts of over eight hundred thousand dollars a piece. Whoa. And they literally and they're over sixty five and they literally live off of their interest. They haven't even touched their savings. They literally live off their they're living off the and interest. they have been to every state in the United States travel to. Outstanding. Not to mention uh outside the United States. So um you know that's not bad. Living <laughs> off interest. Yeah. They're, what do you do for a living? On average, about oh, guys, 11% live off my on interest. portfolio. Yeah. So. And, and then um, do you find that people that who, who kind of dabble in this and actually make some profit on it, do you also find that um, they want to do more? You know, it's, I, I hate attributing this to a tattoo. I was but just going to say the same I would, thing. All right, see, <laughs> See this? Or I knew dogs. this They're is where like we get ships. into the good side of Heather Dreaves here. Um, the, well, yeah, no, I mean the biggest thing I hear about a tattoo is you either love the tattoo or you hate the tattoo. If you love the tattoo, you want another. Yep. So people that invest and make a little money in it, you know, if they really have a good experience with it or they make that nice paycheck to where they can live off their interests, don't they want to? They want to do back. some more. They yeah. want to come back, or, or maybe put some more, deploy some more funds mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. Okay. They'll usually tip their toes, to, you know. Yeah. In the water and like here, I'll, uh, I'll do, do this the much. minimum in the fund. Well, I'm going to try it, and then yeah. they get that quarterly check, uh, and and very quickly they're calling to redeploy some capital. Better payouts than Vegas, guys. All right, so we're getting a wrap up deal. Let's talk really quick about your podcast. Okay. Which yeah. uh, uh, impact investments and and like I mentioned before, not only is it about just general investments in real estate investing, uh, that sounded weird, uh, but this one also affects communities, mm-hmm. uh, property values, cities, municipalities love you. I yep. mean, explain how all that works and what you guys talk about. Yeah, um, it's actually been a great little podcast. You know, I think Eric and I both bring different things to the podcast. We come from different backgrounds. Right. Um, which is great. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we talk a little bit about what's going on in the current market, not just in private money, but in the market everywhere, stock market, mutual funds. Eric's very uh, in tune with that. Um, I've been doing private money forever, so I can do that in my sleep. Uh, So we talk about those types of opportunities. Um, Coming up, we're actually going to highlight um, how to set up and use and what the benefits of a self-directed account is, which means you can roll your IRA. And if you're not working for the employer that gave you the 401k, you can actually roll that to a self-directed custodian. And you can invest in notes and funds, which are considered alternative of investment. So every podcast will highlight one special thing one special that we kind of just hit on. Uh, but we're always going to talk about the market, what's going on in the industry. Um, we'll talk about, you know, how our fund's doing. Um, that's something we're going to highlight too. I think that's important to kind of keep everybody um, up to date on. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is affecting communities. Like I said, it's creating home ownership. It's allowing, you know, people that have money to deploy capital to earn double digit returns backed by real estate assets. So it doesn't get much better than that. Right. And uh, obviously communities get better. Property values go up. Absolutely. Somebody wants to sell their home nearby. You know, they're going to make more than they thought they would yeah. because obviously the houses are a little more, you know, beautified. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet everybody makes out whether it be profit or Absolutely. just better living in general. Right. Yep. All right. Check it out. Impact Investments Podcast. Uh, you guys can also, we encourage you to either go to our page, uh, kogocapital.com forward slash kogocast. We want to know what you guys want to hear. All right. Seriously. We we want your feedback. We want you to go in, leave your information. Tell us what subjects you would like to talk about in a podcast or listen to in a podcast. And we will be sure to address those front hand. And then also Impact Investments. You can go to securedinvestmentcord.com. Uh, You can actually go to the media tab to uh, go to the podcast there for Impact Investments. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Lee Arnold. Uh, And then, of course, on audio, you can download this at all the sources there. Apple iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Echo. And, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree. Did I get everything? <laughs> I think I might have gotten any everything. Uh, and then also, here's a little tip, folks. When you uh, tune in on the Impact Investments podcast, tell Eric Bergman he needs a pair of cowboy boots. <laughs>
<laughs> We've been giving him a we're lot gonna of. Convert him we're going to convert him. convert him, and we want to yeah. we want to see him wear those boots on the podcast because he's Mister City Business, Mr. you know, California. Yeah, he's he he's so OC. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, we we want to thank you guys for joining us, Heather. This was fun. It was fun. I want to have you back in. Would you come back in? Absolutely. Okay. I do want to mention one last thing. If you're in the local market, Coeur d'Alene, Spokane, uh, we are actually having a investor impact forum dinner uh may 16th at the davenport grand dinner will pre- be provided it is going to be a very nice event uh and we're going to just educate people about the fund uh we're going to talk about the opportunities to deploy capital through the fund how our fund has performed lee arnold is going to be there speaking nice uh and you're going to have an amazing dinner so if you are interested get a hold of eric or i and we will get you on the list uh seating is limited and it's starting to fill up so it's just a couple of weeks out and you can you can get their emails and their contact information by going to our website securedinvestmentcorp.com uh, forward slash, I believe it's Impact Investments, or just go to securedinvestmentcorp.com, click on Heather or Eric's uh, picture there, and you can get a hold of them directly. Absolutely. We want to thank you guys for joining us for another episode of CogoCast, the Real Estate Investors Podcast. We want to thank you uh, once again for joining us. We hope you'll tune in, like, and subscribe, and let us know. Please go to our page. Let us know what you guys want to hear in upcoming podcasts. Until the next time, we are out.